Hello everyone. Hi. I welcome you all to this lecture of Zenith Academy Online. I am Shravika Jamnik, your teacher for today, and together we are going to learn about growing a plant. But uh, why is learning this chapter so important? Why is learning about growing plants so important? We all know that plants give us oxygen, they give us shade, and most importantly, they give us food. I love food. Think of anything you are eating and keep in mind that it needs to grow properly for us to eat it. I know, I know. You can be smart and say, but I eat only non-veg food. But the chicken, the meat, the fish you are eating, even that needs plants to eat. And do you know what the most important occupation of any country is? It's farming. Wow, right? So let's have some fun and learn about growing a plant. What do we need plants for? We just started and we already know the answer to this. We need plants because we get food from plants in the form of grains, pulses, beverages, sugar, oil, fruits and vegetables. I know even I don't like vegetables much but let's still thank plants for it. The second point is plants purify the air around us by giving out oxygen. This is done with the help of a process called photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is a process where a plant produces its own food with the help of sunlight and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And in turn, it gives out oxygen. The third point is, they also prevent soil erosion. And what is soil erosion? When there is excessive wind, or water flowing, the soil is carried away with it. But to prevent it, the roots of the plant hold the soil intact and therefore the soil is not carried away, which means the soil is not eroded. How many times have you noticed a seed and wondered if you can grow a plant with it? During summer, we enjoy mangoes. But we usually throw the seeds. What if we learn to grow mangoes with seeds? Is it possible? Oh yes, it definitely is. This can be achieved with the help of a process known as seed germination. What is seed germination? The process by which a seed changes into a seedling in the presence of the right amount of air water and sunlight is known as germination. Let's now learn the stages required to grow a plant. In the early stages of germination, the seedling gets its food from the cotyledons. Don't panic, try saying it out loud with me. Co -t -le -dons. Cotyledons. Have you ever seen sprouts? They usually have a layer on top of them. This layer is nothing but the cotyledons. When the seed is too young and can't produce food on its own, the cotyledons will provide necessary nutrients to the seed so that it can survive. The next point is, the seedling soon starts to grow roots in the downward direction. Hmm, why is that? Why in the downward direction? Can you guess? Yes, gravity, correct. In the next stage, the shoot starts developing and the shoot will then develop leaves. I just mentioned that gravity will pull the roots downward. Then why not the shoot? Because the shoot will then develop leaves, which will in turn make food for the plant. And for this, it requires sunlight and oxygen, which is present in the upward direction in the atmosphere. Not all seeds grow into a plant. Why? Let's find out. Birds consider seed their food and eat it. 
we have all seen birds eating seeds, right? Some seeds get destroyed by wind and heavy rainfall. Even humans can be carried away in heavy rainfall. Then how will we expect a tiny seed to survive? Some seeds do not get the necessary conditions for growing. For growing, a plant needs sunlight, water, air and soil. Otherwise, the seed won't germinate. Have you ever seen a plant move from its place and go somewhere else? I don't mean you taking your plant on a trip with you. I mean on its own. I hope you haven't. That would be really spooky. But in fact, a moving plant would be helpful. If there is crowding of plants and they germinate too close to one another, they will not get enough nutrients and none of them will be healthy. Humans are late to find out about social distancing. Plants have been familiar with it all along. Let's see how these seeds can disperse. The first method is dispersion by wind. Seeds of some plants are lightweight and are hairy. Have you seen dandelion? Dandelion is so light that it can be carried away with wind. Second is dispersal by water. Some plants have spongy seeds or seeds with a fibrous outer covering which helps these seeds stay afloat in water. For example, lotus. Lotus can stay above water and can disperse seeds in water. The third method is dispersal by animals. Animals may eat fruits and throw the seeds away. Or some seeds can cling on the bodies of animals and then get carried away from there. Example of this is Xanthium. Have you seen Xanthium? They have these spikes that can stick on your clothes and then get carried away somewhere else. The fourth method is dispersal by fruit explosion. Hmm, maybe this comes in mind. But this is not what I mean. Some seeds like poppy, pea and bean burst open on ripening. And then the seeds get scattered in all directions. Some plants grow from different plant parts. Let's take a look at them. Roots. Example, carrot, beetroot and sweet potato are all roots. We can make out from the shoots growing upwards that these are roots and can be used to grow a new plant. Second, is leaves. Take a look at bryophyllum. See the plants growing along the edges of the leaves which grow into adult plant. Third is stem. Potato is actually a stem and potato eye can be used to grow a new plant. Nope, not this eye. These eyes are different. They can be used to grow a new plant. Even rose stems can be used to grow a new plant of rose. Let's take a look at agriculture and crops. The practice of growing plants for food on a large scale is known as agriculture. The plants of same kind that are grown in an area over a period of time are called crops. The area in which crops are grown is known as a farm. Now let's see the stages of agriculture. First, plowing is done with the help of a tractor. Next, seeds are sown. And then the crops are supplied with water. This is known as irrigation. The crops are then sprayed with insecticides and pesticides to kill any kind of insects or pests on them. And finally, the crops are harvested so they can be used. I would now like you all to find what Kharif and Rabi crops are and then learn the difference between them based on season, months, when the crops were planted, 
when they can be harvested and the examples of a few crops. If you like this video, please share, like and subscribe. See you soon.